What are the new challenges also? Now I would request Dr. Bazala to continue. Sorry for the interruption, Saket. Please continue. Okay, okay, okay thanks, Ajit. Not an issue. Yeah, so uh, I'll just launch my presentation. Just let me know when you can see this. Yes, it's visible, Saket. Right, okay. So. Is it on full screen now? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Thanks, thanks, Ajit. So, Ajit, I was uh, I was just saying before uh, we developed this technical glitch that it's so uh, the animal is so fascinating uh, that it's everybody loves to talk about it. Everybody loves to read about it. Unfort means uh, that uh, the challenge is when you when you uh, make a presentation on tiger, so much is written and so much is said already said about it that you find it really difficult. That what new can you uh, talk about tigers and their and and about them okay but then uh, the added advantage is everybody wants to listen to them no matter how many times they have heard uh, these things so i'll be talking about as i said i'll be talking about the global uh, perspective about the challenges which uh, we uh, we the i would say the traditional challenges the successes which we had achieved and then there are more challenges which are upcoming or new and emerging challenges so i'll be talking about uh, these things in in detail Okay, but before uh, uh, we know that tigers have really, as I said, they have fascinated everyone. People are all stuck uh, by mainly by their power, by their courage, by uh, the solitary life which they live. Uh, kind of things. So everything about tigers are so enigmatic. Everything about tigers are so so uh, means uh, loving that uh, that people are really really uh, are fascinated by this uh, this cat, uh, large cat. Okay, and there are people means uh, who have worked in tiger uh, conservation. They are in complete love with this animal. I can talk about myself. Um, I must have uh, had so far more than hundred interactions with tiger uh, or encounters with tigers. Uh, in wild, thanks to my uh, posting in Cobbett, uh, one of the reason, and then my love for visiting different tiger reserves. Uh, but uh, even today, uh, not a not a hint of boredom uh, has uh, come in. So even if you uh, talk to me, or if Dr. Gobi invites me that tomorrow morning at five o'clock we need to be inside a forest, I'll be there at four thirty. That I can be, uh, I can assure everyone. So and that it's not just me. Mythologically also, and uh, since uh, historically also, tigers have really fascinated everyone. Everyone in the human kind, I would say. Uh, we have different examples from all across the globe. Uh, there is uh, one example in Sundarbans, an Indian part of Sundarban also, and in uh, the Bangladesh part of Sundarban also. They are born Bibi and Dakshin Rai. So they are, uh, they are, uh, they are worshipped. Uh, there is a folklore. 
uh, it is it is a kind of mythology everything uh, rolled into one so this is south asia okay if you talk about china china uh, tiger is considered as king okay and there is uh, uh, there is a symbol on tiger head which is in chinese known as wang which in chinese refers to king so they have associated uh, the power of uh, tiger everything related to tiger with this symbol so they feel that it is uh, it is king so this symbol represents king and that is there on tiger forehead so that's how uh, how the mythology and folklore works and uh, and tiger is one of the 12 zodiac signs of uh, in china uh, so that is one this is in china if you talk about east asia as such you will find tigers everywhere you will find you will find tigers in the in the art you will find tigers in their folklores okay everywhere even uh, even uh, for south korea tiger is a national animal uh, tiger is also national animal just not just for uh, india but also for bangladesh and for malaysia also but just imagine a country like south korea there also tiger is a a national animal why we will come to that why how it happened we come to that okay then uh, you go to southeast asia in thailand and malaysia everywhere you will find uh, some kind of mythological uh, uh, body some kind of folklore related to tigers so that is tigers are so much everywhere and closer to south asia south asia is home of tigers you will find again uh, again stories related to tigers everywhere this is the famous tiger nest monastery in bhutan okay where it is said that uh, one of the buddhist master uh, guru rinpoche he came on a tiger sitting on a tiger back flying tiger back and he landed here from tibet and that's why this monastery was established so you will find tigers in in everywhere across its uh, range extra, ac across its historical range everywhere deep seated into our mythology and our folklore and tigers are also there in our day to day life also again this uh, photograph is from bhutan and again from india you go to any tiger reserve you go to any landscape you will find that tiger sketches are uh, printed painted on walls so it is so much of a human or it has uh, come so much in our life that it, it has become part of our life again this is from uh, a wall art on a street wall art in which which i took uh, in kathmandu so just imagine so tiger has become so so loving or so caring that it is also fetching vegetables for for uh, human beings so it is so much uh, well in built in our in our traditions in our uh, our day to day life okay it is also a very popular brand ambassadors okay so everything can be sold in name of tiger the match boxes uh, the match sticks can be sold any kind of liquor is being sold in name of tiger even the high end rolex watches okay which are also sold in the name of tiger and any time you walk into any 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 bar or somewhere you you can have a happy hour uh, using uh, tiger a bear or something okay but one thing you you should note that somehow tiger have, have always achieved the cult of luxury cult of best uh, in that even that matchbox which is in japan is also says best matches so somehow tigers have assumed or have taken that best uh, possible place in our in our is that's how prevalent tiger is that's how everywhere tiger is and we all know about uh, different products which are sold in the name of tigers in our country but as i said that uh, it was it might be surprising to someone that what tigers are not found in south korea for example okay that what tigers are doing why uh, tigers are exam is a national animal in south korea or several other countries okay so this gives us also uh, a, a a brief map uh, that where tigers used to be historically found so just imagine all these yellow portion is tigers historical range okay so you can see that tiger were found in kazakhstan they were found in entire uh, Uh, south asia uh, southeast asia east asia uh, japan uh, korea everywhere okay so this was the historical range but so this is something which we should know but this also gives us a very sad reality uh, the orange part shows that where they are concentrated now so you can easily say that up to 95% uh, uh, habitat has been lost and to tell you frankly these these orange parts also are habitats of tigers now even within these habitats if you pinpoint uh, tigers presence as on today this will even more this will shrink even more for example myanmar uh, there are habitats but there are very few tigers left there so that is the reality which we are facing today okay 
what has happened to tigers i think there has been a drastic decline of tiger numbers even just if you talk about from 1960s till today okay the tiger number has dropped really sharply and there are uh, several tigers uh, we used to call them subspecies earlier scientists uh, now are debating whether they were subspecies or not but anyway but we have lost tigers from many part of the globe where they were historically found uh, and today tiger numbers have really come down really uh, very down though they have shown some kind of increase in recent times but still tigers are uh, i would say in, in, in bad bad shape okay what happened it's not easy to understand this frankly first of all you saw that uh, the range their habitat has uh, uh, that has shrunk uh, really uh, drastically uh, so habitat loss is one and second is how we hunted uh, these tigers or how these tigers these animals were poached uh, photographs like this are not rare to find frankly if you take uh, if you take any shikar book of british uh, time you will find these uh, these photographs quite common so they were killed in 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 large numbers okay uh, this is just one example there was one hunting expedition uh, in which the then voice by lord lord linton low was involved in just 68 days of hunting in chitwan which is in nepal now just imagine how many animals were killed and out of that 120 were tigers okay so just imagine in 68 days if they were not working for example on weekdays uh, weekends uh, and they were working only on weekdays or they were hunting only on weekdays then in one day they killed two tigers okay and again as i said these this is not a a once in a uh, in a lifetime or once in a while kind of expedition these expedition used to happen quite regularly and these examples these photographs these kind of uh, data can uh, come from anywhere okay so tigers were killed in large numbers but thankfully one of the reason again I, as i said that during my presentation i'll talk about the negatives but i'll also talk about the positives also so thankfully even when humans have uh, pressurized them or uh, have uh, uh, put them in so much of trouble somehow tigers have uh, survived maybe in small numbers but uh, in in different different landscape in different habitats and since it is such a adaptive uh, cat it is such a adaptive animal it has survived it has survived in really surprisingly different landscapes or really surprisingly different habitats for example we know sundarbans okay the largest mangrove on earth uh, you want it's not easy to survive there but tigers have survived there okay again the other example this one is from ranthambore okay rajasthan again hot dry arid area again tigers have survived in large numbers there okay this one is from amur area of uh, of uh, uh, china and russia area okay the snowfall uh, everywhere snow um, if we know about uh, siberian tigers again even that in that snow tigers have survived okay and this one is from bhutan okay this was more than 3500 meters uh, above sea level again tigers are flourishing or they are at least surviving if not flourishing in these areas also so that gives us hope that if given some kind of protection tigers can survive in different landscapes also in just in 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 our country tigers have been reported in near kedarnath in uttarakhand in sikkim in high altitude areas in sikkim and arunachal pradesh where earlier nobody imagined that they can survive in these areas but they are surviving in these habitat also so they are very adaptive species so that's one good point so what happened is once uh, all these things uh, means tigers were uh, really pushed to the Uh, to the corner kind of thing so globally also there was a lot of attention on tiger conservation so we had the summit in st petersburg in 2010 where all tiger range countries world bank other um, organizations ngo everyone got together and they thought that they uh, decided that we need to do something on uh, of for tiger conservation and a goal was committed that we will try to double global tiger number by 2022 uh, uh, during that uh, summit only it was decided that 29th of july which is today will be celebrated as as uh, global tiger day that's what we are doing uh, but also let's see that how far we have achieved and what we have achieved in tiger conservation since uh, 2010 i would say we have a mixed bag tigers have done some uh, really good things in some areas uh, they are not doing some uh, so good in different areas uh, one thing which has uh, really uh, i would say encouraging is that the protected areas tiger protected areas uh, have been established Uh, across range countries this is not just uh, from 2010 onwards this is the entire tiger range uh, protected areas which are there across the globe 
or across tiger range countries uh, right now this information came this morning only where uh, global tiger forum has published a compendium of protected areas uh, so i'm using uh, this from gtf uh, so you can see that uh, these yellow spots are tiger uh, protected areas so we have a good network of tiger protected areas and in all uh, habitats in different habitats right from near to sea coast uh, in in mangroves to um, uh, siberia and other areas also and in islands also so we have a good network so that is one achievement which we have uh, achieved so far okay uh, another achievement i would say is that earlier there used to be tiger uh, skin used to be uh, sold used to be used uh, in large number tiger trophies were in huge demand these photographs which were taken again by uh, uh, wpsi they did a kind of co a kind of uh, covert operation in tibet uh, many years back and they found that tiger skins uh, leopard skins many of them coming from india nepal they are being sold uh, freely in tibet area but then after that lot of uh, international attention came into that many organizations worked towards this and uh, even uh, the religious uh, um, uh, bodies they were also involved into this uh, holy dalai lama also intervened and so uh, because of that the use of tiger skin for uh, for different making different garments uh, this is the robe which uh, this gentleman is wearing is known as chupa uh, the ro the uh, the demand for these has come down drastically and also the demand for trophies have come down drastically so that is again one uh, we can claim some kind of success uh, which we have uh, been able to achieve it's not come down to zero as on today uh, it's not that uh, there is no demand left but i would say that there is substantial decrease in demand uh, in this so that is again one success which we have achieved another success i would say which we have uh, so far we can claim to achieve is that there has been a, a international uh, collaboration among different agencies different organizations on tiger conservation so uh, different agencies have come together under cites under uh, global tiger forum uh, under the global tiger initiative program so they have come together and they have started working on tiger conservation and also the uh, there is a lot of uh, emphasis on capacity building uh, for tiger conservation so these are some good things which uh, we need to uh, understand so where do we stand today i think as i said that uh, we have a mixed bag of successes okay if we talk about range countries so these are 13 range countries where tigers are found now since 2010 we have seen the number of tigers have increased in india nepal bhutan they have remained almost same in bangladesh which is also a success frankly uh, and they have also increased slightly in uh, russia and china and again uh, the problem is as i said that mixed bag is if we talk about south asia and if we talk about amur halong area which is uh, russia china border uh, the condition of tigers have improved slightly to a, uh, to a greater extent in few countries and slightly to another other countries but the problem is southeast asia where you will see the tiger number have even uh, in since 2010 also they have gone down and there are few countries where uh, frankly they are believed to be extinct now uh, the latest reports are going on uh, and we'll see that uh, where it stands but it it is it is uh, feared that they might have gone extinct at least in three countries of southeast asia so as i said it's a mixed bag we are doing well in south asia we are doing uh, okay in amur and halong area but we are doing extremely bad in southeast asia and there uh, we need to uh, take it up uh, as you see in this photograph this is from uh, the uh, the siberia area of russia uh, where uh, siberian tigers are found and there uh, the, as you uh, can see that i am witnessing all the bug marks of siberian tigers so under these circumstances also tigers have survived so that's a good news but they are not doing good in other areas so that's a concern okay uh, if we talk about india frankly uh, it is a really a success story a big success story in overall tiger conservation area we have highest number of tigers in in the globe okay and we are uh, in fact we are leaders uh, in tiger conservation in in different management practices uh, in everything thanks to ntca which is national tiger conservation authority a very good support both political support and policy support from government of india a very good work by uh, by state governments different state governments different tiger reserves uh, across across the country many states are doing extremely well karnataka is one of them and dr sanjay gobi will be talking about this uttarakhand mp they are doing extremely well 
and because of this combined thing uh, as you can see that our tiger we have approximately 70% of global tiger population and from 2006 onwards tiger number have uh, have shown a steady increase uh, and right now we have approximately 2967 uh, approximately around that number of tigers in our country okay but uh, then uh, and how we have achieved this so this is not a, a one day uh, i would say achievement okay there were times i'll just go back in history there were times when india used to be a famous uh, spot or famous country or famous range for tiger hunting in fact we used to publish these kind of advertisements in 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 western countries in us inviting people for uh, for uh, tiger hunting here okay but then everything changed uh, india realized Uh, as a country that we cannot uh, let our tigers die just for few uh, dollars or few foreign currency we need to take a stand we took a stand we said that tiger uh, uh, hunting poaching uh, tiger hunting especially legal hunting is banned we completely stop this uh, this was led by uh, uh, by a tiger task force which was chaired by dr karan singh uh, which came out with a report giving a status report of what tigers are going through Uh, in the uh, in in our country uh, and a project tiger was launched in 1973 it was initially started from nine tiger reserves uh, it started from corbett tiger reserve in dikala where it was formally launched uh, but it was uh, launched in nine tiger reserves and today a network of 51 tiger reserves where uh, project tiger is being run through ntca uh, national tiger conservation authority at the federal level and state government uh, at the uh, state level and uh, it aims not just at tiger conservation but also as a, a ecosystem protection uh, for the entire ecosystem protection and we have uh, see uh, we i would also like you to appreciate that in not many decades back we used to invite people for hunting but now we are so proud of our tiger conservation that this morning our honorable uh, pm he also tweeted uh, about our tiger conservation uh, story so india as a uh, as a proud nation we can say that we are leaders in tiger conservation across the globe when tigers are not doing good in many part or i would say in in majority of uh, tiger range countries we are the one who are protecting our tigers really good and we are the one who are leaders in tiger conservation and we should be really proud of all of this okay but i would also now uh, i would also uh, add few things that it's not that uh, everything uh, is now good and we can just uh, sit on and enjoy our laurels no we need to be continuously uh, alert continuously aware continuously working towards tiger conservation now this is a fact check kind of thing uh, this this is a international study which traffic did uh, uh, in 2019 uh, which is known as skin and bones an analysis of tiger seizures in which tiger seizures across all tiger range countries and across the globe were analyzed so you can see that this is the situation of tiger uh, seizures and uh, and and, and um, uh, poaching uh, it's not poaching it's only seizures but this is what the seizure figure shows and here you can see that india is one of the uh, topmost uh, country where tiger seizures have uh, been uh, in maximum obviously because we have too many tiger numbers so that's why uh, this will come out but still this this is just to show that our tigers or tigers globally are still threatened so we are doing good in few areas but that doesn't mean that we need to just sit and enjoy uh, our successes we are under continuous threat tigers are under continuous threat and even if you don't take uh, enough measures we are going to lose them okay and uh, there are few new and emerging challenges which are emerging which i would like uh, to draw your attention to okay when i say new these were the challenges frankly which never existed earlier or at least traditionally okay they are something very new and so we need to have new strategies we have to ne- have new uh, new approaches to deal with them and there are also some emerging challenges which were already there but probably because of different reasons now they are becoming even graver okay if we talk about uh, the new challenges internet are uh, internet is becoming a major challenge internet is the now the most preferred uh, platform for trading uh, tiger uh, or any wildlife parts uh, connecting to a l- larger group it also provides a, 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 um, i would say um, uh, that somebody can work on it anonymously without knowing that from what who is the person is who is selling or buying these things and from which part of the globe 
okay so that uh, that kind of uh, facility internet provides and what we have been seeing is that in recent times internet is emerging to be a, a major uh, i would say market a virtual market for wildlife product and for tiger products so that is one and when i say about internet it's not just internet it's about uh, the end to end uh, messaging systems uh, it's about uh, smss it's about encrypted messaging which goes on the second problem which we are facing is easing transport we know that transportation facilities whether it is rail transport road transport or air transport or shipping everything is increasing and this is adding a new dimension to the threats which tigers and wildlife face across the globe uh, now we have new airports coming up Uh, approximately in every part of the globe especially in india indian domestic uh, airline sector is one of the fastest growing airline sector across the globe we have many new airports many international airports which are coming many of these new port new airports are very close to tiger bearing areas so it becomes very easy for people to transport these things okay second is uh, the financial transactions because of digital payment the financial transactions have become very easy large sums of money can be trans can be exchanged over these digital platforms uh, which used to be uh, not the case earlier uh, earlier uh, the enforcement agencies used to follow follow money used to approach uh, the follow uh, money approach and they used to see that where all these money is going and then they used to track it but now because of digital payment many of them are very secure these transactions are happening very easily across the globe and it is becoming very difficult to see that who is buying and who is selling and how uh, this uh, uh, money is being exchanged so that is a new challenge which we are facing and then there are new hubs of trade earlier there were few areas which were never considered to be a trade hub uh, you'll be surprised if you don't know that a uh, few years back there was a a tiger uh, trade uh, network which was busted in czech slovakia okay in czech republic so just imagine czech republic which is in europe which uh, we never thought that can be a hub of tiger trade there also tiger trade was happening mainly because of the tiger which are kept in farms uh, and uh, their body parts were exchanged uh the Czech Republic really acted very fast on that they did a uh, lot of seizures and a lot of action but then as as i said that these are the new hubs of trade which are emerging many uh, tigers are also kept in africa and south africa and all again in farms and their bones their skins they are also um, being exchanged across the globe so we been, which we never imagined because we our whole emphasis our whole efforts were concentrating towards tiger range countries but these are the new hubs as i said these are the new challenges which we need to face and then there are uh, the emerging or the existing challenges which are becoming even graver now uh, the habitats are being fragmented we know uh, infrastructure development um, land diversion of land for development everything is fragmented these habitats human wildlife conflict is an increase okay because of human population is increasing we are intruding in new areas uh tigers are finding it difficult or wildlife are finding it difficult to negotiate these areas we are blocking their corridors uh, their prey base is being depleted uh, their habitat is being uh, uh, threatened so human wildlife conflict is also increasing and ultimately unfortunately uh, humans do pay a price but a larger price is paid by a wildlife or by tigers the uh, the third one as i said emerging threat is traditional medicines we know that each and every part of tiger body is being used in traditional asian medicine system now this is not a new thing uh, they have been used for ages but now since uh, the buying power of people in asia in other parts are increasing so people are becoming more and more dependent on they can they can afford to buy uh, these expensive uh, traditional medicines also uh, i would say in a way unfortunately that these traditional medicine systems are also uh, becoming popular in western countries in america and us and in other areas also so the uh, the market for these traditional medicine system is increasing in fact i read a study that uh, the uh, the market for traditional chinese medicine system has increased by 11 to 20% in last few uh, decades so that's the growth so ultimately if the demand for traditional medicine system will increase ultimately uh, wildlife will be under threat and one of the most prized wildlife for traditional medicine system are tigers so again tigers will be under threat then occult practices so you know there are uh, this is very much uh, common in india also 
that every part of tiger body maybe it is canine maybe it is claws uh, uh, whether it is their uh, their mustaches uh, everything is being used for occult practices or black uh, black uh, magic practices again another challenge is tiger farms which we don't have in india but several uh, countries of the globe uh, have tiger farms and many of these tigers are being farmed here uh, their products enter illegal wildlife trade market and uh, because of that uh, our wild tigers are also under threat because there is a existing market and they use uh, tiger farms as a, as a, i would say excuse to trade wild uh, tiger products also how internet or how end to end uh, encryption is uh, working i'll just show you one video uh, th these are not all tiger claws but these are uh, leopard and tiger claws mix so videos like this just imagine are being circulated uh, and uh, the uh, the uh, 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 means the buyers are being lured into this uh, so these things internet end to end uh, encrypted service Services, messenger services, they have become very uh, easy for everyone to uh, uh, do this kind of trade. This is an example from a tiger farm. All these cubicles which you see, there are uh, there are tigers in this. You can see few tigers uh, here, uh, and these all tigers are kept in these conditions. Uh, they are um, they die here. They are being killed. Their uh, products are being used. It's illegal in many of the countries. Uh, enforcement agencies do uh, chip in because in many countries, even if tiger farming is allowed, but their trade is not allowed. It is illegal. But then, due to lack of enforcement, we have seen that many of the product of tiger farms they are uh, entering uh, uh, these uh, the wildlife market. So overall, I would say that uh, again, in a crux, if you ask me, uh, we have uh, tigers. Uh, have always uh, caught our imaginations and they have always been we have revered tigers frankly we have prayed tigers at least in india uh, we worship them as god kind of thing and they have always been uh, means have always caught our fascination kind of thing and we have uh, seen that in historically there is a really drastic uh, decline in tiger numbers we have taken steps many of uh, them uh, we have succeeded uh, but then, uh, as I explained during my presentation, there is a lot and a lot uh, which we need to do. Uh, I need to. I like to end this uh, presentation with a quote from Jim Corbett, which is very popular: "That tiger is a large-hearted gentleman with boundless courage, and that when it is exterminated, as exterminated he will be, unless public opinion rallies in this his support, India will be poorer, having lost finest of her flora." I'll just replace India with the word. That the entire globe, entire world will be really poorer if we lose this finest flora. And the other thing which uh, needs to be emphasized here is unless public opinion uh, rallies in uh, his support. So we need support from all of you who are listening to this presentation, who love tiger, who have fascination for tiger, to come together and work for protection of tiger. And only then we'll be able to uh, save this uh, this beautiful, beautiful animal. Um, and we, we, I'm, I'm sure that we'll succeed in this. So with this, I'll end my presentation. Uh, uh, I think uh, now Dr. Gubi will be presenting his slides. And probably after that, I'm, I'm quite keen to hear uh, to Dr. Gubi's presentation. And after that, probably we'll, uh, we'll uh, have, uh, we'll share some, we'll take some question and answers. So that's it from my side. Thanks, thanks everyone. <laughs> Dr. Saket, it was a wonderful presentation, uh, very informative. Uh, you took us through the you know, journey of Tiger from the you know, ages to the stage, what was the distribution, what was the you know, app, what is happening, what are the key emerging threats, and as a society, what we are doing for the conservation. It was very interesting to take over and continue the presentation. So, Thank you, Saket. Uh, thank you, everyone. I'll try and uh, upload my screen now. Uh, I hope it works. Okay.
Is the screen uh, up on your monitors? Yes, sir. Okay. I am presenting that. Hello. Am I audible and is my screen uh, visible? Yes, yes, Doctor Sanjay, we can we can hear you. Can you see the screen, screen also? Thanks. Can you see the screen as well? Yeah, we can. Okay. Um, uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's wonderful to uh, be on the presentation organized by the uh, Malcolm Group, uh, one of the premier institutes in the country, uh, set up uh, by our late King of Mysore, Daicham Rajendra Wadiyar. And I'll talk mostly about uh, tigers in Karnataka and a little bit about tiger uh, ecology. But uh, my whole idea is to ensure that when we talk about Bangalore or when we talk about Karnataka, that we actually have a lot more than IT and BT, but also the richness of wildlife and the richness of um, uh, tigers in Karnataka. That's what I would like to present and how this happened in this state. Um, I would like to thank the Karnataka Forest Department and the Mysore ah, Zoo, Nabi, Mr. Ah, Kulkani, everyone for uh, giving me this opportunity, but also for the long-term support they have provided me for our work in Karnataka. Ah, I mean, if you talk about uh, tigers, it's part of the wild cats. Everybody knows about it. So, um, if I'm talking about... Uh, Tigers, you know, uh, we have to start with wildcats. There are about 38 wildcat species in the world. Five of them are large cats and they belong to the genera Panthera and Neophilus. And how it started uh, evolutionary is that uh, we first had um, uh, the, the Tyrophilus. Whatever you see today in the world, uh, the Felix species, they all evolved from this animal called the Styrophilus, which uh, evolved about 11 million years ago. And the genera of Panthera, as you see in this evolutionary scale, uh, it came out uh, and branched out about 6.4 million years ago. And uh, if you generally look at uh, the subfamily Pantherina and the subfamily Feline, uh, you'll see you have the genus Panthera. So we have five species with no leopards. Uh, leopard, lion, tiger, and jaguar. And uh, in the genus Neophilus, we have the clouded leopard, the mainland clouded leopard, and the Sunda clouded leopard. But the genera Panthera has five large cats the lion, what you see on the left, the jaguar, the tiger, and the leopard. The leopard Sanjay. is the second for cheetah. Sanjay, and just. just. Sanjay, just yeah. a minute. Huh? Can you, uh, the office mic is open. Can you please mute? You can't hear Sanjay very clearly. Yeah, thanks. Now it is fine. Thanks, Sanjay. Please go. Yeah. Am I audible now? Better? So, <laughs> we have lion, tiger, jaguar, and the leopard. And the fifth species we have in this is the snow leopard. But Snow leopard cannot roar like this other four big cats, the lion, tiger, leopard, and the jaguar. That is how <coughs> the snow leopard is different from the other four big cats. So what my, makes this uh, big cats unique is this one. These animals can... Wow. 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 So these animals can roar and uh, they are able to roar because of one special uh, morphological feature they hold which is called as a hyoid bone which is found in their uh, throat and it's a very flexible hyoid bone they, uh, they have while other cat species do not have this flexible hyoid bone that is why they are unable to roar like tigers and lion can do. The, the neck actually stretches out uh, because of this particular uh, morphological feature these animals have. And of course, I'll skip this because uh, Saket has told quite a bit about these nine subspecies, the range countries, all those things. Um, uh, 
if you look at the distribution of tigers in india 18 states in the country have tigers while in karnataka 9 out of the 30 districts those in the country uh, it's about 72 73000 square kilometers uh, in the country's geographical area this is like about 37% as a uh, percent of karnataka's total geographic area of 190000 square kilometers but it uh, forms a very small part of the country's geographical area we have uh, dedicated only about 2.2% of the country's geographical area for conservation of tigers but even with that we have done extremely well in tiger numbers actually but when we are talking about tigers um uh Uh, how are we uh, saving you know what are we doing to save tigers is that that we can keep the tigers in a, in a zoo and save them call that as tiger conservation or can we have a few uh, cute tiger cubs in our home and call that as saving tigers not certainly not uh, ti- saving tigers is actually saving them in their natural habitats and once you are trying to save tigers you are tr- trying to save an ecosystem and all the species that are found in that ecosystem because of one main reason you know tigers like this uh, one tiger we were uh, camera trapping in uh, mm hills and kaveri wildlife sanctuary in southern karnataka bordering tamil nadu had a home range of about 89000 acres or about 360 square kilometers that would be almost half the size of bangalore city you know one individual tiger roaming around half the size of bangalore city or perhaps one fourth of mumbai or new delhi uh, without any modern communication tools like uh, uh, mobile phones or internet or social media nothing you know they are able to um, communicate between themselves and survive and once they need this kind of large spaces we need to ensure we are protecting large habitats for tigers or t- t- look at this example of these two individual tigers the one on the bottom is a male this is a female and these two tigers again found on in uh, mm hills br hills kaveri wildlife sanctuaries in southern karnataka uh, uh, the female actually uh, was first camera trapped in 2014 Uh, by the camera trapping exercise conducted by national tiger conservation authority in satyamangalam tiger reserve later it moved into brt tiger reserve in karnataka and then into mm hills wildlife sanctuary again within karnataka so all the yellow dots show you the movement of this particular individual female and the red dot shows the movement of a male which i had shown you in the previous uh, slide and uh, both of them in 2018 were camera trapped at one single location uh, within a span of 3 uh, seconds so it most probably denotes that they are actually mating so a female tiger coming all the way from the state of tamil nadu into karnataka and passing into two wildlife sanctuaries so basically she has a home range within three protected areas because uh, wildlife or tigers do not have any political boundaries they only uh, respect ecological boundaries so that's very very important to understand that they need large home spaces home ranges and this entire uh, polygon shows how this particular individual male was moving over a very vast area which was spread uh, spread across two large protected areas uh, mmls is 900 square kilometers and uh, kaveri is ab- almost about 1100 square kilometers so it was traversing a very large area this particular male so what does it mean so that means if you are saving tigers it's like an umbrella under which a lot of other species both large and small animals including birds or reptiles or mammals or amphibians or cetaceans all or oh, sorry not cetaceans all of them are uh, protected under this umbrella called as the tiger so as i said you know for example honey badger a small carnivore or it can be pangolin endangered species now in the country um, or it could be chinkara ungulate species because they are all part of important part of tiger's diet or it could be smaller uh, fauna and flora as well it could be mushrooms it could be insects um, uh, or it could also be larger uh, landscape species other landscape species like the hornbill which all get protection because you are protecting one individual uh, species and again another landscape species is the elephant you know which requires enormous amount of space which has also found protection in in india because in the name of tigers and these landscape species uh, perform enormous amount of uh, ecosystem services you know let's take the example of elephants you know elephants uh, put out dung after they eat their food about 300 kg a day and what happens to this dung is dung beetles survive 
survive on them they feed on them they put the larvae in them and for the young animals uh, young uh, dung beetles the uh, the dung itself is the food and the the home and the food and they come out of them so elephant is just again a like tiger is again a symbol or an, or an icon but it is trying to help survive another very uh, important species but a very small insignificant species uh, in the in the larger framework called as the dung beetle or look at this um, beautiful uh, uh, tens of butterflies are um, uh, taking sodium and uh, other uh, minerals from the elephant dung so you will never connect if you are saving elephants you are actually also saving butterflies this is the ecosystem this is how they all survive on, on each other support and help so saving elephants or saving tigers doesn't mean only saving them but you are saving an entire ecosystem including smaller uh, fauna and flora like butterflies or look at this picture of uh, elephant dung and a tamarind tree a sapling in a, in an elephant dung and uh, this just depicts that elephants must have fed on tamarind probably during the month of january february when tamarind trees have the um, uh, have their fruits and elephants have eaten it taken far away from the mother plant and deposited the, the seeds in their dung and a small sapling has come out so they are the gardeners of the forest they bring out they regenerate the forest naturally we don't have to go and plant trees in uh, in forested habitats or habitats which have good uh, wildlife populations the wildlife then cells regenerate the forest and keep a balance there and of course you know all of us know the link between forests and water and wildlife uh, this is the one of the biggest ecosystem services wildlife including tigers give us you know this is one of the largest rivers in in the, in the country called as kaveri at least one of the largest in uh, in southern india uh, which uh, feeds millions of people in karnataka tamil nadu and parts of kerala so uh, there's a direct link between wildlife tiger and water and the survival of people i'll give you example of karnataka the kind of ecosystem services these forests uh, provide us for example 62% of our hydro power comes from for you know comes from forests because uh, uh, sorry 62% of karnataka's energy is hydro power that means 62% of our electricity will be gone if we don't protect forests or let's say pollination uh, one of the important agricultural products of karnataka is coffee uh, in 2005 we export i mean in 2000 10 and 11 we exported about 2000 crore worth of coffee and all the pollination is done naturally by bees and other insects you know imagine if you didn't have bees or you didn't have wildlife which would support pollination all the coffee exports would stop you know we would not especially we as south indians would not have our cup of coffee in the morning if we didn't have wildlife um and um, this is the kind of ecosystem services these areas provide or example in the name of tigers we have set up tiger reserves and uh, ntca and uh, another institute went out and did some economic valuation because people understands uh, economy much better than ecology uh, some of the people so they went and did a study in 10 tiger reserves just to see what was the monetary value of these tiger reserves you know they came out with an immense figure of 5000 crores of monetary value for every tiger reserve 5000 crore is perhaps the the economy or the budget of a smaller states in the country annual budget and uh, if you looked at both the tangible and intangible benefits of 10 tiger reserves it would be 596000 crores you know 600000 crore it's unbelievable amount of money uh, it forms about 18% of uh, government of india's uh, uh, budget uh, 201 times the budget of ministry of environment forests and uh, climate change just imagine we are just uh, monetizing or giving the value of from 10 tiger reserve and see what is what 50 tiger reserves are doing to this country in terms of uh, monetary value and just scale it up to all the forests all the wildlife we have in this country and you will not be able to uh, fathom how much of monetary value uh, these ecological uh, engineers are bringing us and just look at what, how much money this tiger is are, are bringing just in terms of watershed value 33000 crores unbelievable the annual revenue of google is 189 billion it's much more than that whatever tiger reserves are you know bringing in 
and uh, what are this tangible and intangible benefits you know tangible benefits can be employment provided through uh, tourism uh, uh, people staff working in the protected areas the non timber forest produce like the amla it could be fruits and nuts and firewood so many other things timber fodder etc etc intangible benefits can be carbon sequestration pollination all those kinds of things so if you just look at these two slides i mean to these two bar graphs um uh, bandipur tiger reserve in karnataka where i am currently sitting um uh, annually brings about 49 crores of tangible benefits just from bandipur but look at uh, uh, nsgr nagarjun sagar sri sailam tiger reserve in andhra pradesh brings in about 77 crores and similarly look at the intangible benefits of tiger reserves bandipur itself brings in about 37000 crores annually and look at palamavu you know it is bringing 100000 crores unbelievable amount of uh, intangible benefits from these tiger reserves annually and just look at water this is something which we cannot survive without uh, a, a, a commodity which we cannot survive without so look at simli pal 7000 crore worth of water it is bringing us annually or bandipur where i am sitting now again is 2000 crore worth just from the water provisioning it uh, it provides so tigers are actually water for us that is one of the important reasons why we are supposed to be uh, protecting these animals like I, i earlier said you know even your morning amla pickle on your on your breakfast table if you're eating your parotta with amla pickle think that it is because of tiger otherwise you wouldn't perhaps have amla pickles at all and uh, if you just look at what is the cost benefit ratio um, um, uh, if you are investing 1 rupee into a tiger reserve it is bringing out 2 and 1/2 thousand rupees uh, worth of benefits to this country no other commodity no other including gold or uh, platinum uh, or no other business will certainly bring this kind of uh, benefit uh imagine you know you're putting in 1 rupee and uh, uh, nstr in andhra pradesh brings out 7500 rupees worth of benefits no other business uh, model can bring you this kind of um uh, benefits and it has all come free for us you know nature has come very free uh, nature has brought it to us and we need to conserve them and utilize it in the there are other things you know there were key policies which india uh, before independence and after independence brought out uh, this is um, uh, his royal highness jai cham rajendra odayar the the uh, ruler of mysore kingdom uh, um, he set up several reserve including the the place where i am sitting the bandipur tiger reserve and his contribution has been enormous though they may have done it for the other purposes uh, they were very important to uh, set base for conservation of tigers in this country and later our uh, uh, late prime minister honorable indira gandhi she also was very in- instrumental in getting a lot of good policies into this country you know if you see this um, and also very uh, crucial role played by uh, officers in this country both at the state level and national level this is mr sd neginhal who unfortunately recently passed away at the age of 92 he was the first a uh, person for first officer in bandipur tiger reserve when it was not notified as uh, tiger reserve in 1973 so all these people you know the bureaucrats and then the political leaders they all brought out very key policies including the wildlife protection act uh, the forest conservation act in 1980 but in karnataka we had a very key act called as the karnataka forest act and which was brought about in um, 1963 but an amendment was made in 76 which i think is phenomenal and was a landmark move in the in the uh, states uh, uh, wildlife movement because the then forest minister mr uh, uh, kh patil uh, had i mean the forest minister had the powers to give away forest land for non forestry purposes but he withdrew it he gave away his power and said the assembly the legislative assembly and the council should have the powers to divert forest land that i think was very magnanimous for a political leader to give away his power Power and say we need to have uh, we should not have this power within the minister because once they have such kind of powers our forests are going to go extinct. I think that was a very phenomenal move at that time. Uh, very for uh, had a lot of forethoughts and that set a lot of uh, uh, importance for conservation in the state. 
and of course the dedicated field personnel um, uh, the people who administer the the protected areas at the state divisional level but also on the people who are on the on ground the range forest officer deputy range forest officers guards and other people and also very importantly the temporary staff the what in uh, some areas they are called as the uh, uh, anti poaching uh, staff some area they are called pcp watchers they are enormously important and they are con- uh, they are the people um, who are working on ground they are the ones who are made, uh, familiar with this is a picture of anti poaching camp staff uh, taking his drinking water from a place which is very muddy this is how they they built up uh this country's uh conservation network you know the the protected areas the tiger is they this is how they struggled and uh, sacrificed their personal needs to bring in conservation to make it as a success story and even today they are at that kind of uh, areas you know uh, for example i love this picture because there's a they, do, they they don't have communication network but they at some times you know they have small network where they can contact their families you know this is like a mobile phone holder because that is the only place where they get mobile network so they keep they make a mobile phone hold, uh, holder out of a plastic bottle and keep the phones there and only from that location they can contact their families so they sacrifice keep you know staying away from the family is without taking care out of the children but taking care of the forest and the wildlife is just unbelievable and i think they are they are really the big heroes of conservation and all of this you know right from the policy level on ground level huge changes have been made in karnataka which has been pioneering in some issues for example this is the uh, map of karnataka in southern india the dark green polygons were the protected areas before 2011 all the light green polygons were the reserve forests uh, which have lower category of protection and karnataka did a phenomenal job of connecting many of these protected areas they they uh, the uh, it was a co- collaborative effort between civil societies and and the government which was phenomenal uh, which increased the protected area network by 2% of the state's geography area and we got linkages between today you can walk into banergata national park near bangalore and walk out of nagarole national park all through a network of protected areas this is this is something which was very pioneering after this many other states have started to enhance the protected area network and this was one of the largest enhancement of protected areas in the country after the 1970s so there's a lot more future prospects and i'm very sure i'm very confident if such positive things happen it will happen certainly in states like karnataka and uh, uh, one small example i can tell you how the success stories come about is again from this network of uh, three protected areas in karnataka brt tiger reserves mmls and kaveri brt has high number of tigers 55 mmls about 12 and kaveri about 2 to 4 and this has reached its ecological carrying capacity so animals will certainly move from this area to this area so the state government has already notified both these areas as ps this was notified in 2013 this was expanded doubled in 2011 and again uh, in 2019 more areas were added so now we are giving more space for tigers to move from high density areas to low density areas in ecological parlance these are called as sources uh, and these are called as sinks so uh, w- one of the inc- you know anecdotes i can tell you is this uh, uh, young tiger cub which was found uh, born uh, in uh, brt tiger reserve in 2014 and uh, 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 she was later found in mmls uh, wildlife sanctuary in 2018 uh, in the same year she was also found she's the one with another uh, male tiger most probably they were a mating pair and in 2018 the same small young cub was found for our delight with four of her own cubs uh, you know she was a very young cub like you will see her here and in 2014 and in 2018 she became a big lady and she had her own four cubs you know this was a fantastic story because of the protection enhanced and uh, protection enhancement provided to tigers in a sink area like mml tiger so um so if you see this is the same young cub which has become a big lady with her own cubs now uh, what more can you uh, uh, can you demonstrate and what more uh, more delightful things can you see than a young cub growing up and having her own cubs 
and another thing you know karnataka has also been pioneer in so many other things you know you, we don't see, see such incidences in the state because state also did some phenomenal work of reducing defragmenting some of these areas highways passing through protected areas which block the movement of animals or which results in a tiger prey being killed because of uh, speeding vehicles uh, so one example is the uh, complex of nagarole and bandipur tiger reserves where three major highways pass through and all these three highways are now being shut at night time because of the uh, four thoughts karnataka had and the collaborative work between the civil societies and the government and this shows all these are possible even in an era where we uh, usually think positive things cannot be achieved due to the larger political scenario but i think it is possible if uh, s- such efforts are there and uh, four thoughts uh, uh, you know um, uh, people are there within the government and within the bureaucracy so th- this is something which you know uh, phenomenal that happened in karnataka three major highways were closed and many other states started following this uh, precedence which was set by karnataka of course it was a major major work uh, it took a lot of efforts but that is how it is always when first time efforts are being put in so this is uh, the mysore manantwadi road passing through the southern part of nagarole tiger reserve this is how the road was in the mid 90s uh, the all these pictures are taken by me uh, you know midnight early 90s this is how the road looked like um, it was a very small narrow road and elephants or any other wildlife could easily uh, pass on them uh, cross them but later the road started to becoming widened it was supposed to become a big highway but due to the efforts of uh, forest department and civil societies and the government uh, we were able to stop the um, uh, 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 widening of the road now for the very first time in a country a road was closed and shut down and realigned outside the tiger reserve so this road is current of the society to highlight you know uh, tigers and their uh, conservation importance been very informative sir i am sure you know our viewers would be immensely benefited and it will uh, start a sort of momentum for you know uh, tiger conservation at least in this part of uh, country uh, thank you sir on behalf of uh, mysore and jodhpur of karnataka there are a few questions sir i would request our uh, education officers to read out so that you know they get uh, some uh, a clarity about the doubts sir now over to sujosha so the first question is what could be our contribution to save tiger as an agriculturalist okay okay do you want to in the volume I think Dr. Obi, you can go ahead. Means <laughs> okay. Um, that's a very nice question. You know, I really like this question. Somebody saying, as an agriculturist, what can I do to save tigers? Uh, everybody in this country, whatever profession they are into, they can certainly contribute. If you're an agriculturist staying uh, right around the protected area or a tiger habitat, one thing you can certainly do is to uh, reduce the conflict. by protecting your livestock in a manner that does not uh, attract large carnivores to your place that's one very important thing second thing is as much as possible can we reduce our uh, footprint on uh, tiger habitats is something which we can always see if there are alternatives available and third thing is of course there's a huge uh, um uh distance between conservation and agriculture is i think uh, that kind of outreach is required uh if we if you as an agriculturist whoever asks that question would like to take it up because that's something which coming help uh, people uh, the larger section of the society to understand the key importance of uh, tiger conservation uh, i'll just add a few things to that Uh, so next question is uh, in other states like said, any uh, just to yes, add sir. to that agriculture is what agriculturist can do as dr kubbi has rightly said that everybody can do a lot especially i would say that agriculturist who are living close to tiger reserves or to wildlife areas 
I think they have a very very uh, big role to play. Uh, if you're not, uh, means many of you, uh, there are tigers which are living in sugarcane fields in Tarai uh, of Uttar Pradesh and Uttar. Okay, they are popularly known as sugarcane tigers around Pilibit area, around Amaria area. Okay, so they are residing in those areas, they are inhabiting those areas. So, as agriculturist, I think change, changing of crop pattern can be one because we have seen that uh, elephants uh, they come out if there is a sugarcane uh, available nearby and they uh, relish on sugarcane. So, if we can just change the cropping pattern so that overall uh, the conflict can reduce. So I think there a lot of um, uh, things can be done uh, to reduce conflict which will frankly save human beings also from this negative interactions which sometimes we have with uh, animals and ultimately it will save uh, animals. Uh, so, so a lot of things can be done and uh, yeah, thank you very much. Okay sir. So the next question is for uh, Sanjay sir. In other states like Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh, Tiger translocation is being implemented. Are there any such proposals or possibilities in Karnataka? Um, yeah, Karnataka is seriously thinking of moving some of the tigers from uh, high density areas to low density areas. Uh, it requires some amount of uh, thinking, scientific um, uh, inputs and uh, uh, meticulous planning. But I'm sure Karnataka Forest Department, which has done extremely well in saving our tigers, will also do it in a manner which is conducive both for tigers and for people. Um, but there are certainly serious discussions going on within the government uh, these days. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, and a question to Dr. Sakeb. What would be the effect of global warming on tigers in Jim Corbett National Park? Uh, frankly, uh, not, uh, let's not talk about just Jim Corbett National Park, but I think global warming is impacting each and every aspect of our life and also wildlife. Okay, as we have seen that um, uh, the habitat are getting impacted. Okay, so I would say that just start from uh, the areas which are likely to be uh, heavily impacted. For example, uh, the mangrove forest um, of Sundarbans. Okay, so uh, global warming, as we know, that is uh, likely to lead to increase in uh, the sea level and new uh, the areas will be inundated with water okay so there a large portion of sundarban can come under threat if uh, global warming is not stopped and because of this tiger habitat will be under threat okay again uh, there we know that uh, many of the habitats are going undergoing any change many changes uh, wild animals if they are not finding uh, things uh, means conducive they might shift or they might uh, like to move to uh, the more comfortable areas that will again uh, if herbivores are moving carnivores will also move and that will also increase the conflict also so it's it's very complicated um, i would say but yes we can obviously say that uh, uh, majority of it would be a negative impact so climate change is ultimately impacting uh, going to impact each and every aspect of our life and obviously of wild animals also Okay, sir. Uh, which is the state in ca country where wildlife trade is in rampant? Oh, again, so uh, wildlife trade uh, is rampant where we have wildlife, frankly. Okay, so that is a. Uh, uh, if uh, states, uh, there, there are many states, I won't like to name, name them. If there is no wildlife, there is no wildlife trade. Okay, so and also we need to also understand when we just uh, analyze the data. For example, Caesar data and for example, what we have uh, seized, the quantity which you have seen, it also shows that the enforcement of uh, that particular state is really good. Okay, because again, if enforcement is poor, something will go out and we won't even realize. So it will be really difficult to pinpoint uh, that which areas are there. But I would say that if you talk about the hot spots of wildlife trade, then as I said that since so Western Ghat has a good population of wildlife, good diversity of wildlife. We see many cases here. Uh, it's areas which are bordering uh, uh, the, uh, the international borders. For example, Tarai area in UP, Bihar, Uttarakhand. Again, not many Caesars happen there. They are also rich in wildlife and also they are very close to uh, international borders. So not many Caesars happen there and also Northeast. Uh, so that is there. And then, uh, as I said, enforcement, just giving you an example of enforcement. So that also shows that um, which area is performing well. Recently, you will, there are suddenly there are a lot many cases of sea cucumber seizures. Okay. So one of the reasons 
which we can say that said means the enforcement of uh, Lakshadweep, the wildlife enforcement Lakshadweep. They are seizing it has increased in these areas, but uh, it's a, it's a bit nuanced kind of thing. So I would say rich areas uh, we need to be alert wherever we have uh, more diversity uh, because they can be they are either target of uh, wildlife traders or they can be target of wildlife traders. So we need to preserve all these areas. Okay, so next question is. Please enlighten about Make It Atu project and CWLR. Uh, Shuja, it, uh, it will also be nice if you can uh, name the person and from where are they uh, asking this question. Uh, it will also be nice. Okay, sir. Uh, so this question was asked by Mohan Kumar. From? Uh, uh, please enlighten about Make It Atu project. Okay. Um, yeah, Saket, I'll take this question. It's a very uh, specific question from Karnataka. Um, uh, it's a it's a new project which has been proposed to build a dam across the Kaveri River in a location called Mekedatu, which falls within Kaveri Wildlife Sanctuary habitats. And the location where the project has been proposed is also one of the best habitats for tigers. And it's acting as a sink area for uh, tigers and elephants coming uh, from um, high density areas like BRT Tiger Reserve and Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve. Hence, it's very important that we protect this landscape for tigers. Not just for tigers, but also for other species. For example, the grizzled giant squirrel, uh, within Karnataka, found only in, in this stretch of uh, forest in Kaveri Wildlife Sanctuary, along the banks of River Kaveri and their uh, uh, tributaries like Shimsha and Arkavati. Um, so it's very important that we protect this habitat, not just for tigers, but also for elephants, for grizzled giant squirrel, and also for the uh, beautiful riverine habitat Kaveri Sanctuary has, uh, perhaps the last beautiful stretches of woodland savanna habitat and riverine habitat uh, lost, uh, I mean, left in this country. But uh, we also need to give solutions. Always, we, if we say this is not possible, this is what we shouldn't do, but we should also come with an alternative. I think this project is still feasible if they did it at an alternative location like uh, Shimsha, where the gorge is very deep, and uh, it can hold more water than the current location uh, where it would submerge a lot of forest area. But in Shimsha area, it will not submerge. Uh, it will hardly uh, submerge forest area and very little of uh, private area. I think that's an alternative place to set up this uh, project. But also Bangaloreans, because one of the things, uh, the, the reasons why this project is set up is to bring drinking water for Bangalore. But we also need to understand Bangalore cannot... Uh, harvest water continuously from outside. It needs to harvest and protect its lakes. It needs to protect its watershed. The entire city cannot be uh, put with cobblestones and with uh, concrete and with tar. If we, uh, that is the trend these days. You know, we need to keep the mud open, the earth open, for the water to be uh, taken in and uh, uh, discharged as aquifers. Otherwise, we are not going to have uh, surface water or groundwater in Bangalore because the current trend is to concretize every inch of earth which is in Bangalore. And after making that, to where will we go otherwise to bring water for Bangalore? So I think the long-term sustainable way is to look at water within harvesting water in and around Bangalore, but not permanently bring from outside because these outside areas are also very important uh, watershed areas for River Kaveri. So I think in the interest of wildlife and also in the interest of people and our economical, economic sustainability, uh, it is better to have it at an alternate location, but also have better water harvesting in Bangalore. Okay, sir. sir. So next question. So, do you think that there has to be a rethink on translocation, considering the failure of translocation of tigers from Bandargarh to Satkosia in Odisha? The question was asked by Siddharth. Okay, do you want to take it? I can, but I can make very general uh, comments. See, uh, for any, uh, any, I would say, project to succeed, you need to make enough preparations for that. And it's not, it's applicable across the board, across everything, you know, for translocation also. Translocation has been successful in several areas. It, is, uh, it has been unsuccessful in many areas. So until unless the, the site which is receiving tigers or which is receiving any wildlife 
if that is prepared if enough mechanisms are in place translocation cannot be a solution for everything you know you need to put systems in place you need to put a strong uh, i would say uh, protection mechanism there so that if an animal lands up there it should not it will initially it will try to explore uh, so that needs to be covered you need to have communities on board because ultimately as i said that uh, it will explore new areas it might come in conflict or it might uh, just be seen by some uh, somebody who the people they might not have seen that animal there for for many decades so that itself is a conflict that itself is problem so i would say that like for any project until less your preparation is solid your preparation is complete all these mechanisms are in place to monitor it to handle uh, to protect it to handle any conflict situation which arises i think until unless these things are in place uh, translocation or any project is going to fail so we need to be really careful because what happens is if one project fails it gives negative uh, i would say uh, color to everything which is being done in that sphere so we need to be really careful whenever these projects are undertaken so that we are fully prepared and there are least chances of failure i would say that is still there can be uh, few chances but there are least chances of failure and we have covered all the all the possibilities of that so that is there translocation has been extremely successful in few areas so we should not uh, reject it as a concept but these things needs to be done so these are my points rest dr gobi can add to this yeah i agree with uh, whatever saket said yeah uh, uh, preparation is extremely important and one more reason is why translocation is required that's also a very important aspect you know why are we doing this translocation why are certain individuals moved and uh, until and unless we prepare for example many times there there has been hard releases so until and unless we prepare ground for through soft release it's going to fail it's very difficult to succeed in these kinds of scenarios so um, i i would totally watch with what saket uh, said uh, the, you know about preparation preparing the ground preparing the communities acceptance from the communities and preparation uh, from authorities to um, face any kind of untoward situation is also very important because finally it can have a huge impact on the uh, people and uh, the larger um, uh, perceptions about wildlife uh, like uh, saket said earlier yeah that's also my uh, i add to what saket said earlier okay sir uh siddharth is asking how can we use artificial intelligence and surveillance software for tiger conservation okay i'll Don't start it. yeah please um uh, there are so many ways you know uh, technology can be used uh, ai is one of the things um these using ai several years ago to identify leopards to individually identify leopards uh, because they are very uh, they are quite tricky unlike tigers which are very easy to differentiate between individuals using the stripe pattern leopard especially when the database is very large when you have lo- large number of individuals in your camera traps he started using ai uh, to identify individual first to segregate the species now using ai uh, we can actually segregate uh, hundreds and thousands of images we get annually um, either into species and also into individuals of species but the, i'm sure there are other so many other ways people are trying to do ai uh, for wildlife conservation so people have tried using sounds to identify individuals people have used uh, many other uh, aspects uh, but i'm sure saket who is an expert uh, works for traffic will add more how they are using uh, these technology for uh, conservation purposes yeah thanks just to take this uh, forward where dr gopi has already said technology um, i would say has revolutionized many uh, facets of our life and also uh, wildlife management and wildlife conservation frankly so it is a very positive thing uh, and we are already doing it for example if i can talk about uh, uh, talk about corbett so there are very high uh, uh, means high uh, capacity cameras which have been installed uh, on the border on the on the mark on the uh border of tiger reserve so that everything can be monitored these are uh, kind of uh, automatic uh, automatic cameras which obviously uh, take care of that whenever there is a movement they alert the staff okay uh, ntc is using m stripes which is a very simple uh, uh, app based program in collecting data and all these data is being used even for tiger monitoring uh, ai and other things are being used to as uh, dr uh, dr gobi said to uh, to in- identify individual species so lot lot many things are happening uh, uh, even even satellites are being used um, so it's a, it's a it's i would say it's a new 
uh, it can be uh, a topic of an entirely new seminar that how technology is being used but uh, towards the end i will also add one thing that uh, ultimately these can only be uh, these can only support conservation they cannot replace what a forest guard is doing in field it cannot replace a forest guard no matter what kind of uh, latest technology you use it cannot re- place of forest guard patrolling these tiger reserves areas and ultimately i would also add uh, a maybe a quite jokingly kind of thing that ultimately it's artificial intelligence so let's not uh, uh, keep our intelligence aside uh, for artificial intelligence you know it's ultimately artificial so let's use our common sense and let's use our intelligence it can be a very good tool but it is just a tool and it depends how you use it so these things i would just like to add thanks Okay. So with success of Project Tiger, there has been increase in human-tiger interaction as well. How to mitigate this? Question by Prayag. Okay, I'll start with it. See, as long as we have conflict-prone species, uh, it could be macaques, it could be elephant, it could be tigers. Uh, there will always be negative interactions, or what is popularly called as human-wildlife conflict, and this conflict is nothing new. it has been going on since the time human started to graze uh, sorry human started to uh, 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 have livestock and also when they invented fire uh, and when they started agriculture so conflict is very old you know as old as 12000 years old uh, when people started to farm and also when people started to uh, hoard livestock so conflict is certainly not a new concept it has gone up it has come down the uh, the intensity varies in different areas uh, but uh pro pro thoughts you know how do you mitigate conflict which may emerge in the next coming years is what is very important we need extremely trained staff to do conflict uh, mitigation but also do a lot of proactive outreach conflict is not just emergency situation when a leopard comes into a village or when a tiger comes into a, a farm area or an elephant gets into a crop field conflict is a lot lot can be solved by doing a uh, proactive work you know much before the actual incidents occurs so uh, outreach according to me is an extremely important part of conflict uh, capacity building uh, both uh, within the general public and also in the authorities is another important key aspect of uh, conflict and with, uh, dr gadola and uh, have a good match um i'll i'll give a different uh, angle to this you know may i'll say that uh, let's see that why this conflict is arising i think our solution or mitigation measures lie in those things only the main problem is uh, the wildlife they are happy living in their wild they don't want to come and live in city frankly okay they are happy there but we have destroyed their habitat first thing uh, they used to move from one area to another area they have destroyed those talk about carnivores they used to happily live and eat their prey we are we have depleted their prey base okay so these are the things because of which they are coming in conflict if you want to mitigate them if you want to solve them we, we need to go back to them we need to provide them a safe habitat we need to provide them good amount of prey base we need should not be interfering it unnecessarily going inside the forest unnecessarily for these reasons we need to protect their corridors so that because of their needs their their genetic need i would say because they need a genetic exchange their uh, habits they would like to move uh, in different areas and few of the a- few of the animals which we are talking elephants tigers and all they are large range animals they move a larger area if we so we need to have these connectivities or these corridors well in place if we can save all of this i'm really sure that conflict will come down to a larger extent another thing which we need to do is i think we need to have more professionalism available or more professional help available with us okay because even after this if conflict happens conflict means negative interaction generally if an animal comes uh, close to human beings then we should have a professional team ready we should have animal rescuers we should have good veterinarians in our department those who can act efficiently proficiently and in a very professional manner to mitigate that conflict or to ease out that uh, that interaction they can just take the animal release it in wild so all these things all these infrastructure we would uh, need but as i primarily said that if we can if we can revert back to the situation where they were earlier i know it's not easy but i think there are enough solutions which can be done if corridors can be protected if prey base can be enhanced 
if habitat quality can be improved so then i think probably the conflict level will come down drastically and if it comes then we should have a professional response to it it should not be i would say that in few areas you will find that uh, these are very unprofessional response if i can say that so that should not be the case we should be really prepared uh, for this so that's my view thanks yeah i mean it's a very important thing i know habitat is very key for uh, wildlife conservation and in my opinion the uh, future of wildlife conservation in this country depends upon how we handle conflict say that uh, and also the type of the question that audience that actually the asked uh, it appears that most of them are actually well aware of the uh, aware of tiger and the conservation and issues as can take it forward to the general mass the to cast the the historical course of this tiger and i am really educated and uh, we simply to share with our activities of the state actually the mayesh the project uh, uh, tiger director from the nagarode tiger reserve operate and initiated actually a plus pandipur to cup and these are the opportunities or activities where actually common people or those people that are associated with the conservations can directly come and be a part of the conservation now the idea of this global tiger uh, day celebration and everything is to create awareness among the masses and unless and until we evoke sort of an you know, attachment or a commitment to the conservations or involvement of the general masses we can't take it forward the all the people local people the stakeholders and the scientists the officers level that as an officer as a dfo that whether my killer watcher or not Thank you.